Hello everyone, my name is Asisi Pombingileli and welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video guys, we'll be answering this human ear question from a previous question paper. So, the diagram below represents the human ear. So, this is obviously the typical diagram that you will get um, in your exam question paper. Let's start by identifying the different parts. So they've asked us to identify part C, part D, and part E. So obviously part C is the auditory nerve. So auditory nerve. Then part D is the cochlea. Then part E is the oval window oval window so one 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 okay then state one function of part f so they're not asking us to label or identify part f they are asking us for the function so there's no need in our answer to even mention what part f is we just need to speak about the function so we know that part f is the eustachian tube and its function is to equalize the pressure um, on either side of the eardrum. So the answer will be it equalizes pressure on either side or both sides of the eardrum. If you don't want to say eardrum, you can obviously say the tympanic membrane. Okay, so it's just one mark, so one mark at the end. Now, 213, middle ear infection is a common cause for loss of hearing. Name one way in which middle ear infection can be treated. It can be treated by obviously using grommets or antibiotics. So just one, you can say by the use of grommets or you can speak about antibiotics. And remember, they were asked for one. So you just need to answer one. Don't give more than one. 214 four marks. We need to describe. Describe how part A, B, and C assist in amplifying sound. For four marks. And we are not going to avoid this question. We need that four marks. They are asking us. How part A, B, and E? There is part A, which is the tympanic membrane, and part B, uh, which is the ossicles, I guess, all three of them. I'm not sure if it's pointing at all three or just two, but I will assume it's the ossicles in the middle ear. And part E, um which is the oval window there is part e so they are asking us how these three um, assist in amplifying sound i'm trying to decide where uh, i can write this answer because i don't have space okay for four marks i'm going to write the answer somewhere here um, for four marks we'll start by saying the sound vibrations are obviously transmitted from this large tympanic membrane to a smaller oval window. And these vibrations are transmitted through the ossicles, these tiny bones. And these ossicles, guys, we know that they are arranged from the largest to the smallest. So that obviously concentrates the vibration and amplifies them from the largest tympanic membrane to the smallest window. And the ossicles are arranged from the largest to the smallest. I'm just going to write down the answer. The sound vibrations are transmitted from the large tympanic membrane. Tympanic, this is a T, tympanic membrane to the smaller oval window to the smaller oval window through the ossicles 
through the ossicles and these ossicles are arranged which are arranged from the largest to the smallest and this concentrates concentrates the vibrations uh, thus amplifying them all right let me show you how this would be marked for four marks um, vibrations transmitted through the large tympanic membrane to the smaller oval window through the ossicles which are arranged from the smallest sorry from the largest to the smallest and this concentrates the vibrations and um, thus amplifying them so any four marks there one two three four five yeah any four marks there all right let's move to the next question for five marks and we are not avoiding this five marks describe how the semicircular canals play a role in maintaining balance describe how these semicircular canals play a role in maintaining balance when the body changes speed and direction we talk about maintaining balance when the body changes speed and direction five marks so we know that a change um, in speed and direction is going to stimulate the cristae so the receptor here will be the cristae which will then um, convert that stimulus into an impulse and the impulse will need to be transmitted to the cerebellum right um, and it will be transmitted through the cerebellum through the auditory nerve then the cerebellum will then send impulses to um, to the skeletal muscles in order for balance to be restored so how do we answer all of that in order for us to get five marks Okay, I'm going to change to blue again. Um, let's start by saying, yes, a change. A change in what? They've told us what the change is. A change in speed and direction. A change in speed and direction of movement will stimulate will stimulate the cristae and obviously um, that stimulus is going to be converted into an impulse the stimulus which is the change in environment and then in, in this particular case is the change in speed and direction so the stimulus will then be converted into an impulse then that impulse will then be transmitted to the cerebellum you can't say it to the brain you won't get a mark um, the impulse is then transmitted and we use the word transmitted don't say transported or moved don't use those words transmitted to the cerebellum and it will be transmitted to the cerebellum via the auditory nerve auditory nerve then obviously the cerebellum will then send impulses um, to the skeletal muscles the, this is a T the cerebellum Wow, 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 what a wow, what a wow, what a wow. The cerebellum <laughs> will then send impulses to the skeletal muscles to restore balance. Let me show you how you get your five marks, guys. We're not going to avoid these long questions. You describe, you explain, suggest. We need those marks. 
Now, a change in speed and direction of movement is going to stimulate the cristae. That's where, that's where we start. Stimulate the cristae. So the mark is here from stimulate the cristae. The stimulus will then be converted to an impulse and transmitted to the cerebellum via the auditory nerve. And this cerebellum is going to send these impulses to the skeletal muscles to restore balance. What is important, guys, we need to speak about the stimulus. These are the words, keywords here. The stimulus, which is the change in the environment. In, in our example, is the change in speed and direction. And it is converted to uh, an impulse that word is important that is the message so don't say it's converted to the message let's use the keywords guys that are going to allow us to get marks right converted into an impulse and this impulse will then be transmitted again transmitted is important do not use the words move it will be moved it will be transported it will go to the cerebellum no don't use those words please then here Please be specific. We are talking about maintaining balance. So the structure in the brain that is responsible for maintaining balance is the cerebellum. So if you say these impulses are going to be transmitted to the brain, you're not going to get a mark. You have to be specific which structure of the brain, right? Through which auditory, through which nerve? It's the auditory nerve that we're talking about. Don't just say through the nerve, which one, right? Um, then the cerebellum will then send the muscles, to, uh, sorry, send impulses to the skeletal muscles. Do not just say muscles. Mention we are talking about skeletal muscles because they're then going to restore balance. Very important. Very, very, very important. All right. Please.